Everybody that's interested in big wall climbing, they know the nose, they know the captain. It almost bothered me a little, like how can this amazing looking route, like the, the most iconic route on the planet, how can it see only three or four free ascents in 20 years? I asked around and I didn't really get a, a satisfying answer. They get scared off, I guess, because it's so weird climbing, weird style. To me, that's not good answers. Yosemite, Yosemite. The nose has been central to rock climbing since Warren Harding did the first ascent of El Cap. Half Dome had just been ascended and Mr. Harding wanted to climb the biggest wall in America. After days and days of work, they finally made it to the top. El Cap was climbed finally at last, like the nose was there. People thought it was impossible, but over a period of nearly two years, he finally proved that it was possible to climb such a big wall. Before that, everybody knew that climbing El Cap was impossible. And I think ever since that time, it's been sort of this proving ground. And it's, it's amazing that it's reinvented itself every generation in new ways. In 1993, Lynn Hill was the one that came and made it happen for the first time. I did the first free ascent of the nose, and then in 1994, I did it all free in a day. I still think it's one of the biggest climbing performances in history. It was such a shift in the paradigm of what people thought it would take to climb a big wall like that. Everybody thought you had to be some big, scruffy, gnarly dude. And it showed them that having this strong sport climbing background was the way forward, really. After Lynn Hill, people tried the nose. A lot of people went up there and just realized it was ridiculously hard. Then Tommy Caldwell and Beth Rodden did it in 2005. We did the first team free ascent. Lynn, she did the nose, but Tommy's done the rest. He's Mr. El Capitan. That was it. After comes a void. Nobody free climbed the nose. Didn't even hear of anybody trying it. There's always some kid that's stronger than everybody else, and I'm not gonna be that kid. I'm just trying to be out there having fun and, and doing the best I can, but uh, I won't be the strongest. I don't have to do nine C's. I'm happy with nine eight. It's hard enough for me. I always wanted to actually climb a mountain. Like I always wanted to do a little peak over there, a little peak over there. And it went pretty fast from there on. I started doing competitions, real rock climbing, and well, I've been doing that ever since. There's always this point where I feel like I need to go out into the mountains, like get some adventure done, you know? I was back home before this trip and I was thinking on, like, how can I prepare myself for the nose? I took it as a multi-year project. It didn't have to be this year. I just wanted to eventually free climb the nose. It would be so cool. If I put enough time on this thing, eventually it goes, you know? The first look, you take it out cap, you see the nose. It's one of the biggest lines. It goes from the lowest point to almost like the highest point. It's the most famous big wall climb in the world. It's a historic route. People come from all over to try to do the nose and very few people try to free climb it. Half of the people that climb El Cap climb the nose. Maybe four to 600 ascents a year. And you know, less than one ascent a decade by free parties. So there's a pretty big difference there. When you look at that formation, you see the nose, you see the towers, you see the great roof, you see the fantastic upper dihedral. The beauty of free climbing is that there's always that unknown. You have to find a line of holds that links from the bottom to the top of the wall, and you have to be physically strong enough to do every move. If it has maybe 100 brutes, not even 10% go free. It's scary, it takes a lot of work, there's a huge wealth of logistical knowledge that has to be compiled, and then all the free routes on El Cap are just pretty hard. It's loaded with people a lot. It's so hard that you need to rehearse it. It's a long way to come down to rehearse the hard pitches. You either have to hike to the top and rappel down to that section, or you have to climb 2,500 feet approximately to get to that spot. It just takes this workhouse mentality to do these 
big walled roots. So even if you're a 514 climber, that's usually on overhanging limestone or sandstone that has concrete holds. The strength is the key ingredient that you have to have. When you're up there and it's really touch and go, you could make it or not make it on any given day. And how many attempts does somebody really want to put into a route like that? I spoke to Lynn, then I spoke to Tommy, and separately they both said, you fix down all the way to Great Roof, which is the last 10 pitches, and you start working on both these pitches. Like the Great Roof, I think it's 21, and, and changing corners, 28. You work the heck out of it, you hang dog all over the place, but then to actually do it in the end, you have to start at the bottom and climb to the top in a continuous push, freeing every pitch along the way. We're carrying up a shit ton of gear to the top of the wall, uh, and then I'm gonna work on the very last pitches because they're really hard. Gear shuttling, working the pitches, I was just there on my own. That's when a period started for about three weeks where I would hike up, sleep on top, wrap down the pitches, rope solo up, come down to the valley, spend a couple of days in the valley and then do the same thing. So basically working, working, working. People just aren't willing to make the logistical commitment to working it hard. So you have to have the very best climbers to do that. And there's not that many of them that are willing to put in the time when they have other projects. The question is, can you persevere? Are you tenacious enough to do that day after day or pitch after pitch? First is Gray Roof. It's pitch 21. Gray Roof. Not too great. It's right off of a, of a ledge above Camp 4. You do a long 5'11 plus climb. The first part of it's a vertical crack and it turns into laybacking, very thin seam. And then right before the, the roof turns and you, you undercling across, there's a really hard move. The crack is really thin and it's kind of a long reach to another thin opening and there's really not a lot for your feet. You have to stem your way into the actual roof and then you reach out for those first decent pin scars. I found out that the pin scars, the underclings, they're way too bad. The no should be within top five goals for everybody in Yosemite that should be able to climb that route. I think it's probably the most famous route in the world. I mean, everybody knows the nose. It's just iconic, you know. Going down. Not all the way, but camp six. Working changing corners. Again! Changing corners pitch is really intimidating. First hour, even the first day, you won't find any solution to climb it. You, you'll think it's impossible. Until I climbed the Don Wall, the changing corners pitch was the hardest pitch I'd done on El Cap. There were times when I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. People are intimidated by the reputation of the route, and when you look at the changing corners pitch, it does look impossible. It's very blank. And so a lot of the people that have gone to climb El Cap since then, to free climb the nose since then, have just wrapped into the changing corners first and tried it and been like, this is absurd, I can't do this, so they just give up. It's off camp six. You climb like 5'10 something for 30 meters, it ends. That's why the, the blank piece of rock to the right is so hard, because there, there's no, no more of the big hand crack. You go into the dihedral and then that's the dihedral you're, you're going to climb up. It's hard up to like four or five meters after that bolt. And eventually there will be a crack in the back of the dihedral and it will be like 5'10 climbing from there on. Confidence is pretty high, but I'm kind of worried that today is going to be really hard. I'll try to do some, some big link ups. Especially great roof, I think I, I need to do some more than just a couple of moves in a row. And this will be my fourth day working changing corners. I'll wrap down and work on the pitch. Hope I'll make some progress. So I would just be hanging there, working on the moves, falling a lot of times. A lot of time hanging around, wondering how on earth this, this is climbable. Back in changing corners. Gonna try mini traction now, see if that works better in the Grigri. I'm gonna try to do some link ups, although it's pretty hard by itself. Not much progress. It's all harder than 
days before. This just wasn't my day. At first I carried up water and then Tommy mentioned like there's a spring up there, why are you carrying water? <laughs> so I was like, no, you're kidding me. And I hope to find the creek so I can get water. So I made it to the top of the valley. 4.8 miles to go. Hope I find water on the way. Dry creek number three. Creek number four, number five. Just starting to get thirsty. Yes, creek number six. Always trust Tommy Cowboy. This might take a while. I found the spring. It was it was still running after like three months of drought. Hike to the summit, where I am right now. Weather's looking good. And then tomorrow, changing corners. so complex, especially changing corners. There won't be another single pitch like that ever. It's incredible. I can hardly imagine a pitch being so much harder and still climbable. It's just very technical. And when something feels that insecure, it's really hard mentally to believe in yourself because you know that if you just are off by a millimeter, you could slip off. Left, right, left, right, left. Free climbing a route, what does it mean? Do you have to lead every pitch? It's up to you. As long as you say what you've done, in what style you've done it, I think you're good. There's two hard pitches on the nose for a great roof and changing corners. And at least you want to lead those. I just had an early morning try, the great roof. Almost do it, but finally, no, my foot popped. Wasn't meant to be. It was really hard on me actually. I was up there for two days on the top of El Cap. I worked it in the morning, got back up at like nine o'clock. I forgot my book, so I was just sitting there. Summit! At last. A whole freaking day. It gets dark at 6.30. You're just sitting there on a piece of rock. You see Half Dome, Sentinel, the cathedrals. You see all the way to freaking San Francisco almost. You look at that for 10 minutes and then you've seen it. So I just sat there. I was doing like math riddles in my head and then telling myself stories. Potatoes, yum yum. And eventually there was two uh, Canadians that came up to work on solid day. So they ran over like, hi, I'm York. Who are you? <laughs> are you gonna hang out with me? It was so funny. You, you always learn stuff about yourself when you're on your own, I think. So I hiked back up again. It's starting to get annoying. But uh, I think it's gonna be the last time. Yes. I found a partner, which is super cool. There's this Italian guy running around Camp 4. He comes to me and he's like, I will go up with you. I'm happy to come up with you. And I'm like, yeah, why not? We're gonna have a good time. Meet Angelo. He's from Italy, Abruzzo. Abruzzese, verace. Angelo Angelini. It's <laughs> a very nice name. See? I'll work on it tomorrow once more. So, last night in my little bivy cave. I hope at least. I see the amount of effort that goes into free climbing a route on El Cap as making the experience in the end that much richer. We have to be willing to put the time and, and necessary effort into doing it. There was so much motivation of free climbing the nose. For me, it was such a big goal. I knew that I would have endless energy until the point that I actually do it. You really have to be focused on what you're doing and you have to be willing to accept that it's not gonna go easily. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You have to do that on the nose. So we are at camp four right now. Ravioli. We free climbed everything up to here in... He did. Kind of a long day. <laughs> Not to me. I'm going up there. Great roof. Wow. The first. <laughs> Amazing. I felt really good. Didn't really warm up that well. I, I ran up the 30 meters up to the roof.
started the boulder problem and then something went, I don't know, it just didn't feel possible. So I started to mess around a little bit, use different beta. I was like, dude, what are you doing? You're, you're messing up, you're messing up. I started to get a little nervous and then all of a sudden my knees, they were, they were starting to shake wildly. Like, I was thinking like, oh my God, does Angelo see my knees at this distance? Because this is really looking bad. <laughs> I was shaking and the feet are, are super small. It's basically friction, friction feet. I just stopped there and I was like, dude, get your shit together because <laughs> You don't want to. You don't want to be falling off after the crux, man. You're gonna. You're gonna send this bitch, and you're gonna run to the top. All of a sudden, I I was past the crux. I was like, how 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 did this work? You did different beta than you worked it. I made it to the belay and screamed wildly. Yeah! I just sent the great roof! It was on the limit of falling down. Both my knees went like on the small feet. Yes, we're moving camps to camp six. Yeah, I've been wearing a hat for the last 24 hours, so I've got a bad hair day. Yes! If you free climb the great roof, you know that you've done one of the key pitches, but the hardest one is the changing corners. After that, it's, it's almost done four pitches away from the summit. Uh, we're at the base over here, this camp six. What is above us? <laughs> the, the, the changing corners. Very good. And you're gonna do it tomorrow. Oh yes, like I am. Did the roof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my third day on. Starting to get a little tired. The first time I got very close to sending it straight away. Cruised all the way to the very end, to the last foot placement. My feet started to get jittery. All shaky, my knees went like whoa. The foot placements, they're very delicate, the feet are very small. So I put my left foot just to the side of that small little foothold, stepped right beside it, fell off. Ah! Two inches away from the jug. When I fell on changing corners, all these thoughts, they, they just fly to your head all of a sudden, like, oh my god, can I really do this again? I tried to shut, shut down from everything. And um, just sat there for a while. I tried to get myself back to calm. I tried to tell myself, even if you don't send it today, you got like two days left. You can even do a rest day tomorrow and climb on your fifth day. Emptied my head, went through the moves one more time, got my shoes back on. I would be at the no hand looking at that jug. I'd be like, okay, that's where I have to go, that's where I have to go. And, and throughout the whole pitch, you'd sneak a look out like, oh yeah, it's getting closer, it's getting closer. Oh yeah.
It went a lot better than, than the great roof. Everything just felt in control, you know. The foot placements were all like they should. I jumped for the final jog and it felt like such a relief. So I basically knew there hanging on the jug that I had done the nose. Oh, I did it! Yes! <laughs> that was my actually my summit. I was just so euphorious, you know, so 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 happy that it, it worked out so well. I felt super confident I was not gonna fall off the last uh, like the last couple of pitches. I've been screaming this morning quite a, while, quite a lot actually. We're gonna have a party up in Camp 6. We were just having a good time up there. Yes. Gonna go down, get a big pizza, and we're gonna start the party. Yeah! Angelo! What do you think? It's awesome! It's awesome. I just, I just felt super destroyed afterwards. I couldn't decide whether I was, whether I was happy or just plain exhausted. We're done. Chapter over. I'm so tired. I can't believe how happy I am, but I think I'm more tired than happy. My buddies, they're all, dude, that's really cool. You did the notes. I still can't believe it. 20 years ago, I discovered that free climbing El Cap was like the coolest thing in the world, you know, and I've like had this secret that not too many people have really known about. And I think it's just starting to be illuminated in people's minds now. There's a lot of people coming from all over the world to try and free climb El Cap. I want to get people psyched on this thing. My goal is actually to make this route a little, a little bit more popular. It's a route that deserves a lot of a sense. The journey in big wall free climbing is so much more intense and so much more complicated and so much more beautiful in every way than any other type of climbing. And it's really fun for me to see other people starting to kind of embrace that and realize that as well. Like your, you know, that's that's just what it takes. You have to understand that it's not about the grades, it's about the experience. It proved that if you come prepared, it's not just some inhuman thing, that you can go there. If you're a good climber and you really want to do it, it's possible. Looking back on it, I had such a great time, but nothing has changed, you know. It's just, uh, the nose. I really hope that in the next 20 years it sees more sense than four. But that's for me to, to change, I guess. Huh? I, I'm gonna get people psyched and let's see how, uh, how that works out. Danny trying to move the bag. It's, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> Yosemite, Yosemite, the place I am found. Trying to find a mountain as tall as the earth is round. They say it got the longest face he'd ever seen. Jets are fast again. Maybe it's the Germans, Angela Merkel, making war on our Barack Obama. Maybe it's too heavy. Catch it, Danny!